Hello everyone. I want to take a few minutes to share about my wedding planning process kit and what you can expect from that template should you choose to download it. I have over the last year in selling it have been asked a few times for a glimpse at it so that there's a better understanding of the format and what one could anticipate when receiving it. So I want to start by showing you guys the table of contents and as you'll see at the top here, I do have that, you know, you'll need to note that this is something you'll have to adapt for your own needs because I am in Austin, Texas, and all of our markets and regions are going to vary. There's going to be, you know, a big difference in a southern market and a northern market or um, just different cultural aspects to consider and things of that nature. But by and large, what I've included in here is enough information to get your wheels turning and your... Um, your, your brain thinking about all the, the details that need to be considered in planning a wedding. This was actually something that um, I collaborated with on the former owner of Refine, and she is in California, Southern California. So we've combined those two regions and have, you know, made quite the kit here. So it starts with, um, you know, at least 68 pages here. It goes beyond that. The last kit starts at page 68, so you've got 68 pages of meat and potatoes, and I'm just going to kind of walk you through the table of contents and share a little bit about these pieces, and then I'll show you the format that I have for you. So we start with contract clauses to consider. This is not a copy and paste of my contract. I feel like that is proprietary information that belongs to my lawyer. However, I do have a couple of my clauses in here just so you can kind of see what that looks like. You are held responsible for not um, copying and pasting of that information. You are asked to respect that. But um, I do provide some information that you need to discuss with your lawyer as you go into those meetings with him or her to make sure that they understand the wedding industry. So I have that in there for you. It's a couple pages long. Then I also have a web contact form and pre-booking questionnaire. These are the things that I ask clients ahead of time before they book us. So if they've reached out to us, they've filled out our, our um, I have a web contact form. That's what this is. So they've, they've, they're filling that out and it's some pre-vetting questions. And then once they fill that out, I have a pre-booking questionnaire that I send them uh, so that we can get to know them a little bit more before we hop on a phone call or a meeting. It's just part of my vetting process. I also have a pre-booking meeting agenda so that you can see what we talk about in those sales calls. I have an onboarding a client template. So this is just the outline or the welcome letter that we send to our clients. And again, that would need to be adapted to your needs, but it can at least give you an idea of a format and some wording. I have a client profile and a detail tracker. Our client profile is meant to gather important information about the client up front, their jobs, their birthdays, um, addresses, things of that nature. And then I also am asking them questions like, why did you decide to book our company? And what other companies did you interview? What did you like about them? But what, what, what was your deciding factor for us? I also asked them, that, and that tells me so much about what I need to do for marketing in the future. I also asked them a lot about their design and things of that nature. I asked them about family dynamics, you know, things that we need to be aware of in regards to parent divorces or, or, you know, are there any concerns about anyone with alcohol, things of that nature. So that's just kind of a place that we refer to as we plan. The detail tracker is a place that our clients are tracking all of the decisions that they make throughout the process. And we give this to all levels of service clients. For our full service clients, we're filling out more of it than our clients are, but there are still pieces that they're responsible for. And this detail tracker, as you'll see in a moment, will allow us to really capture uh, all the things that we need to consider in planning. Then I have our planning process um, map for event management and full service, both within this, and I include my meeting agendas for both levels of service. And this is my A to Z, how I plan a wedding. I also have um, information about creating a solid client experience and the, the ways that we do that. I include uh, two different wedding timeline templates. I have a basic one that's just kind of a good skeleton to go over in the first consultation so that it's not too overwhelming to a client. But then I also have a very full 
um, extensive timeline template that either the client can fill in themselves or you can fill in. But it's also one that's really great for if you if you have team members that are working on your team, if you want to give them that and make sure that they're just filling it in. And uh, it just ensures that they include everything. And I, I, I tie this into Timeline Genius. That's a platform that I use uh, to help with that as well. So then I have my final walkthrough checklist. And that is something that I send to everyone prior to the final walkthrough. And I remind them of our timing and all the different things around that. And it's something that I print and bring with me and just walk through um, as we have that final site visit. I have an order of ceremony template, and this just goes over the processing order, recessional, et cetera, et cetera. And this is something that the client fills out directly so that I'm not extracting details from other documents. And it's what I print and use at the rehearsal and on the wedding day. So it's just a document that they, they complete on their own. I have the rehearsal diagram, which is basically just a chart showing you where everyone's standing. It's just an added visual aid that I think sometimes can help depending on how our brains think. I have a decor instructions template, as you'll see next, and this is where all our clients fill in everything that they're bringing because I want to know what I'm showing up to and I want to staff for it appropriately, and I have deadlines listed for that. Uh, this helped me, uh, you know, when I first started, I sh there were two different weddings in the early stages of my career that people showed up in with U-Hauls. And I said, this has to stop. I was communicating ahead of time my parameters, and it was just – why was it still happening? So this day core instructions document has put a stop to that. It shows me exactly what they're bringing and it, it gives them some instructions and some details around what is included in their contract. It includes the reminders and things that they have to initial so that we're all on the same page. I also have a wedding weekend itinerary and this is what I send to the wedding party and to the VIP family members. And I get their email addresses by the client typing that into the detail tracker that I mentioned above. But the wedding weekend itinerary includes all of the addresses, parking tips, phone numbers, dress codes, uh, just the general schedule for the weekend. And it's just a cheat sheet for wedding party and their dates. And uh, again, this is something that I have the clients fill out. It's something that I used to create on my own based on pulling information from the detail tracker. But now I've just removed that from the detail tracker and created its own document so that there was no copying, pasting, duplicate work, or any of that uh, going on. And now if there's a mistake in it, it I used to, I used to, I used to be so nervous to hit send on that wedding weekend itinerary to wedding party because I was just like, Oh my gosh, I know the client has approved this, but Sure enough, every time I'd hit send, the client would respond and be like, oh, this is wrong. And it's like, oh my gosh, but you approved it. So from now on, I can say, or from starting this process, I can say when I hit send on that, if something's wrong, then the client knows that they're the one that got it wrong. And of course, we don't want anything wrong anyway. But, and I, I certainly review it for the details that I'm aware of and for accuracy and whatnot. But all that to say, I have... Um, just removing my liability in, in, in using this document. And by having clients fill out these documents directly, I'm saving a ton of time, a ton of time. Um, I also have a change of order template, and this is something that's been talked about in the refining group for several years. I shared with it. I shared it, um, I don't know, three, four so years ago. And it's something that is um, helpful for wedding day changes and surprises as far as oh, we'd like to stay an extra hour or, oh, no, someone didn't show up, the vendor, and now we're stuck with doing something. And uh, there's a process involved in that that allows me to get paid for it. I have a final stages document that lists out our um, schedule uh, for the final stage, and this really uh, applies more to event management. Uh, and I find this to be helpful as far as just making sure that we're all on the same page as far as timing and expectations and next steps and it's something I introduced to them at the walkthrough. They've been given this information at the beginning, but I remind them of it at the walkthrough. Um, and I, we have just started putting these, uh, this schedule on their calendar as well. I have two gratuity documents. One lists the things that we see in our uh, vendor wheelhouse, our vendor network. So this would certainly need to be adapted to what you're seeing in your market. 
It's just a, an outline that you're welcome to use. And then I have a gratuity checklist and it is something that I print and bring with me on the wedding day. And it is something that the um, client has to sign when they hand me the tips. They have to sign like, you know, photographer and then they initial it and caterer and then they initial it. And then when I hand it to the photographer, they have to initial that they received it and the caterer has to initial that they received it. So it's just a CYA and I've um, found vendors to be very appreciative of that. I also have a wedding day checklist and this is something that my team uses to make sure that we stay on track. We have vendors initial it throughout the evening as we have certain checkpoints with them and it's something that I send to the client immediately after the wedding because when they go to brunch the next day and bridesmaid is yakking about something that they think went wrong, the client can know that they've received this thorough checklist from me and have further trust in me. So. It just, it's good for us as far as accountability. It's good for us as far as remembering things and, you know, having the staff that's on the same page. And then the vendors really appreciate that we have that thoroughness to our system. They feel safer with us. And then, like I said, it, it, it just provides so much more trust and safety with our client relationships. I have an overnight vehicle list, and this is something that if a guest decides to leave their car, you know, if they're drunk or whatever, they've been drinking, then we write down their contact information and their license plate number. And then we provide this document to the venue so that if for some reason their cars are not picked up at the time that they were told to pick them up, the venue has a way of contacting them. And that is just an added level of, I mean, that's just a, a little touch that we do as far as our vendor, our venue relationships go. It's certainly, I don't see that as a planner's duty and paid responsibility, but it takes five minutes and I, I find it to just really uh, help bond us with the venue owners. They appreciate that. So we want to do everything we can to stand out to them. I also have our wedding debrief document and this includes, you know, my you know, excitement and welcome to marriage note to them. I thank you for allowing me to serve them. And it also includes our final steps as far as going over anything that needs to be discussed after the wedding. And also uh, it discusses, um, you know, asking for a review and what that looks like. So let me scroll through and show you a little bit about uh, this format. This is, as you can see, a Word document, and I've done that intentionally because I feel like you are all using different platforms as far as your softwares or um, infrastructure and CRMs go. So maybe some of you are on Google Drive, others on Isle Planner, some of you might be on Dubsado or Planning Pod, and I, there, I just want to make sure that this is versatile and something that you can use across all platforms. So I have intentionally made this basic and in a copy and paste uh, format for you. And it's not meant to be specific to Owl Planner, though I use all of this in Owl Planner. Uh, it's something that you need to, to adjust for your company, but it is ready to use. It's just a matter of copy and paste. So that format, as we scroll down, you'll see contract clauses just written out there. Um, you'll see my web contact form and pre-booking questionnaire and how I just have a list of questions there for you. And I have some I have, I also include just like little notes of education throughout things as, as, as I have these templates made for you. Um, I have my pre-booking meeting again, just kind of in an outline of things that we ask and I don't follow it to a T. I want that conversation to be organic and natural, but these are things that you could study and review and maybe be prepared for going into those meetings. This is my onboarding a client, uh, letter and this is what I send to them and again you'll need to adapt that for the things that you tell that your clients when you on board but this should give you some ideas of what can be done my client profile is several pages but it, it's just questions like uh, what activities do you enjoy to do in your free time where do you shop for clothing what style inspires you what's your go-to drink where do you like to travel hotels you prefer all of those things really tell me something about them when they talk about, I have a question on here, how do you typically spend splurge money? Well, if, there's, if their answer is something that I would consider you know, lower budget, then I know, how to, I know how they're defining budget terms and language, right? Because if they, on the, on the flip side, mention something that I would consider 
you know, a true splurge, then I understand that I just, I just know how we're talking in that, in that financial conversation based on how they answer some of these questions. So that can be helpful. Um, I also at the bottom of that include, I asked them about, I'm just going to switch over to one page at a time. I think that'd be more helpful. Um, I asked them about their, um, I mentioned this a minute ago, but like family dynamics. And then I also asked, you know, let's get social. And I talked to them about, um, following each other on Instagram and things like that to build relationships. I don't follow clients personally on or allow them to follow me until after the wedding, but we do our, our, we follow them on our company accounts. So, but after the wedding, I like to keep in touch with them because they become strong referrals and I, I really care about them. So detail tracker, this is where I'm asking the clients for all of this information that I mentioned earlier. I want to know all of their wedding party, all of the special people involved, the VIPs, the vendors, all the way down to jewelry and bridesmaid dresses and everything that I need to tag when I'm uh, posting it on Instagram. Then I have details based on categories. So ceremony, reception, alcohol, decor. Um, I'm asking all of the questions that they need to ask going into their meetings with these particular vendors. So when they go to their baker, they need to ask about, um, you know, do they want one cake or two cake? Will that be decorated? Do they need cake flowers or faux flowers, sugar flowers? Do they need um, a cake stand? Where is that coming from? Will the baker bring a, uh, uh, an extra box, things like that. So all of those things need to be asked in that meeting and then they need to be recorded here so that I have that information. And this is just a safety net for the clients to ensure that they have planned for all of the details. So again, I have that for all of the different categories. And like I said, you're going to have to adapt this for your market, but this should at least get a really good foundation and save you a lot of time in creating. Then again, at the bottom of this, I have reminders throughout my all of these throughout a lot of these documents. I have reminders of things that are they've agreed to in the contract or deadlines, things of that nature, so that we just have multiple checkpoints on our system and process. So this uh, right here is uh, that's helpful. Then I have my planning process, like I mentioned. Again, it's just in a Word document, and you can follow that or put it. I even have this plugged into Aisle Planner as a checklist. Then I have my meeting agendas for that, um, and you can break these down and put them into canned emails, and it's something that I send to the clients ahead of time. And at the top, you'll see um, just how long we allocate for those meetings and whatnot. It's just all about communicating expectations to clients. And I have the full planning uh, process. And let's see what's next. We've got the meeting agendas for full service, creating a client experience. This is not necessarily a template so much as it's just a coaching guide and things that we do that we find to create better relationships with our clients. Um, wedding day template, I mentioned that I have a basic one and I also have a more thorough one that they can fill in all of these pieces. So see how long that is? It's very thorough. Then I have my final walkthrough checklist. And these are the things that we need to talk about in the final walkthrough. And I also take layouts and all of that stuff too. I have an order ceremony template. I have two different versions. I have one where the bridesmaids and the groomsmen are entering separately. And then I have a second document where the groomsmen are escorting the bridesmaids. And perhaps this uh, changes in your market or for a particular unique wedding. And you also need to be um, mindful of gender neutrality in some of these documents. I um, have done my best in that regard, but have also um, recognized that um, each wedding is so different that there's going to be a lot of changes throughout the way you do this. So just, just pay attention to that as you make edits to these um, documents. Like this one does say grandparents of the groom and grandparents of the bride, but that might need to be adapted. So be sensitive to that. Um, I also have, let's see, let's send that the, the diagram. So like I said about this ceremony document, I just print that the client fills it out directly then, um, and I just take it straight to rehearsal. Then I have a rehearsal diagram where we can draw that all out and see then here I have partner one, partner two. So you'll see different things throughout and you just need to make sure that that works for your, um, your couple. 
here's my decor instructions template. And this has dramatically shifted our workloads on wedding days to where it's just put a stop to all the silly stuff that people assume we do because I have all of these instructions and these tips for packing and getting ready, the things that they're allowed to bring or, um, and whatnot. I have contract reminders in here. They have to initial throughout. And then I, I delete all that stuff at the top before I print it for the wedding day, but at least I have it on file. Then they are providing me the different elements that they're bringing for, um, the different sections of the day. So pre-ceremony, cocktail hour, um, then I want ceremony stuff, reception, all of that. And you'll see how I have the item and then they need to then so the list what they're bringing and then they have an instruction column. And so in that column, they'll either um, provide a picture or some notes about it. And then they'll tell me who it's brought by and then they'll tell me who it's managed by. And by doing that, those two, uh, that managed by column is what has changed so much for us because when they mention that we're doing something that we're not contracted to do, then I, I'm queued in to contact them and just get that adjusted before the wedding day. And then I have a sparklers disclaimer here because we have our exit item listed and I'm pretty um, big on sparkler education. So we, we educate there in addition to other areas, but that's just one more spot. My wedding weekend itinerary, as I mentioned, is something that lists all the locations, all of the things happening. And like I said, this is just, this is made in a way that they can just fill it out and all I have to do is check it for accuracy and send it to the clients. So um, I make a note on this general wedding day timeline that this is something that I will fill out um, as the planner because when they do it, sometimes it's more detailed than I want it or not, maybe not as accurate. They've used an old timeline. So that is one section of this that I do make sure is done. Then I have the change of order template. These are... Um, some things that you might see pop up on the wedding day if they don't plan accordingly. And since I've started providing this, my clients do plan accordingly. So I've actually only used this two or three times in, I don't know, five, six years. And honestly, these prices should be updated, but they have to have a decision maker. I want a credit card information on file and you can kind of read through how all that works, but it's a, it's a, a layer of protection. My final stages document presents what our schedule will be in the final um, in the final stages, what they can expect from vendor communication, decor and details. And then I give tips on a variety of different things that sometimes get dropped through the cracks. Gratuity, I mentioned that. It's our tips and suggestions. Again, it's just a Word document and needs to be adapted for your market. Gratuity checklist, this is something you could just print and bring with you on the wedding day. And then my wedding day checklist, again, it's something you can just print and bring with you. It's things that I need to do to prep and get um, ready the day before. And then upon arrival, I have a whole slew of things that we go through. And you'll see these little lines where I have um, vendors initial to show that I did those things. And it just, um, just strengthens my relationship with the clients. They see this ahead of time and know I'm going to do it. And so they, when they get BS comments from guests or or whoever else, they can be like, no, my wedding planner took care of that. I know they did. Um, overnight vehicle list, I mentioned this, something that we give to the venue manager, and then my debrief. So it's just the letter that I send them. It's, um, you know, excitement for them, and then I provide tips on writing reviews, and then I use this debrief word document. But, um, I, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I, I have – a Word document that I either attach to um, the email with these couple uh, areas of uh, focus, or you can include that in the email. But we've actually stopped using that as much because on some level it seems forced now that our weddings are pretty streamlined and flawless. Um, so currently we're more focused on this survey and we send this survey after the wedding and it just helps us understand our value and how we can further market it gives them a place to provide feedback uh, and then I have some coaching moments here um, on that process and what we do with it so that gives you 70 pages of um, time saving tools resources and risk management you're just completely um, providing efficiency for your business with uh, a kit like this and allowing clients to take responsibility for some of those things doing them themselves but don't feel bad about that I feel like 
clients need that structure and if they're filling them out directly then it's just less work for everybody and it's something that um, they are impressed by you even having in the first place so that is what I have for the wedding planning process kit my other kits are in a similar format where it's just copy and paste and ready to go uh, of course you needing to tweak for your business so I do encourage you to read through them very thoroughly and then Something I want you to know is that this particular kit, the wedding planner uh, process kit, is included in the refined course as well as the refined workshop. So that is a big portion of the value that you receive in those two things. And then the course and workshop also um, come with promo codes for the other kits if that's of interest to you. So that is the way that I format things. And I'm happy to answer questions so you can always reach out via the Facebook group or my email, amber at refineforweddingplanners.com. I prefer that over Facebook message as it's, it's monitored a little bit more and it's something that I can uh, be more organized within. Facebook message is totally fine. Just know that I don't always see them or there's a delay or um, I might see it while I'm, I don't know, running an errand or with my kid and then forget about it completely because it's not marked and organized the same way my email is. So amber at refineforweddingplanners.com is the best way to reach me. Okay. Thank you. And you guys have a lovely rest of your day.